What's up guys, Retro Gaming Guy here. So today in this video, I wanted to actually show you guys how you can repurpose an older PC and turn it into a retro video game emulation powerhouse. This is gonna be great for people that are just getting their feet wet with retro video game emulation. Now, a lot of people have been seeing that I do a lot of mini PC reviews, a lot of which are really high-end mini PCs with tremendous capabilities, but they also cost an arm and a leg. This is a little bit overkill if you're just getting started with retro video game emulation. And in all honesty, you don't need to go out and spend six, seven, eight hundred dollars on a mini PC just to play Dreamcast or PS1 or even PS2, in all honesty. You can go with something much more inexpensive and at least test the waters out, see if it's something you're going to be into long term. And then from there, of course, you can upgrade, go to something much more high end that may even have AAA title capabilities as well. But to get started, I recommend going with something a lot more affordable. So right here, I have the Dell Optiplex 7050 Micro PC. Now, this uses an Intel Quad Core i5 6500T uh, processor up to 3.1 gigahertz on here. So it definitely has some speed going on here. 16 gigabyte DDR4 RAM, 256 gigabyte SSD installed within with Windows 10. Now, Windows 10, obviously, older than what we're currently using on Windows 11. But depending on what you're going to use for emulation, you may not even need to use Windows at all. In fact, I'm going to show you guys around Botticera today. I love Botticera. What you'll end up doing is you'll basically put Botticera onto a separate SSD, and you can install that either internally or externally. So let me show you guys what this PC offers. And currently, I just bought it off of Amazon refurbished for $127.89. Now that's the price at the time of this video. Prices do fluctuate sometimes on a daily basis, but that should give you at least a ballpark as to what your cost is going to be for this particular micro PC. Now you can go with this one, you can go with some other options out there as well, but they should give you around the same price point on here, typically anywhere from like 110 bucks up to 150 bucks. And I definitely think at that price point, you're going to get some good bang for your buck here. You're going to be able to dive into a wide range of game collections. But in this video, I will walk you guys through the entire process here so you can get your PC up and running as a retro video game emulation console, if you will. Let's dive into it and see what we've got here and how we can convert it over to a retro video game emulation powerhouse. All right, guys, so here is everything that was included in this bundle that I got from Amazon. Again, the price I paid was $127.89 for everything you see here. So We've got a mouse in here, we've got a keyboard, nothing special, very generic, but certainly gonna get the job done. So we'll go ahead and set that aside because we'll use that for the setup process here for sure. Now we also have, of course, our power cable as well. So it's a two-part power cable. So just connect this part to this part, plug it into the back of your PC, and you're gonna be able to power it on. So very simple there, but let's actually take a closer look at the PC itself now. All right, so very nicely put together, all metal, so it's not cheap plastic or anything like that. So right here in the front, we have our power button located right here. Below that, we have our headphone jack. We have audio uh, connections. We have right here a Type-C port. We have a USB 3 port. Flip this around to the back side. We have our Ethernet port. We have four USB 3 ports right here, which is phenomenal. Love having access to those because as a gamer, you can put plug in controllers. And as we set something like this up, we can bring in a flash drive, we can bring in a micro SD card reader, we can bring in keyboard, mouse, etc. Lots of options here. Over here, we have our display port, we have our HDMI port too, which is great that we have the option for both of those. We have another display port over here, and we can actually open this up very easily. You notice that there's one set screw back here, we can actually loosen that to open up the entire PC right here. So sometimes they'll over tighten it. If that's the case, you'll use a screwdriver just to get it started, but let's see. Yeah, we can do it with our finger here, so perfect. It's not gonna come completely out, you're just going to loosen it until it starts to kind of flop and wobble. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually pull back on the front panel here. So I'm gonna pull that this direction and I'll push this part that direction. And all that's going to do is move this front panel up so it opens up just like that. And we have full access to everything internally. And inside here you can see we have our cooling fan. Uh, and it is pretty clean within here. A little bit of dust on the top here, but for the most part, pretty clean. And right here, we have access to our SSD. So depending on what you wanna do here, this is what I'm gonna do. You can use this with Windows 10 on here if you want, and you could put something like LaunchBox on here using Windows 10, or we can actually repurpose this SSD right here, put Bodicera on here, and completely turn the entire micro PC into a retro video game console. That's what we're gonna do today. So. I'm going to actually remove this. What we're going to do is we're going to just simply pinch these two tabs together and with our other hand, we're going to pull 
this entire piece right here back towards us. That simple. You can see it totally disengaged our SSD. We have that portable now. And the cool thing is we don't have to eject anything further. We can use it exactly like this. And we're going to bring over a SATA to USB adapter cable to actually connect this over to our regular PC that we're going to use to set this up with Botticera, which in turn is going to convert this entire PC into a game console. So let's go ahead and bring this over to our other PC and start setting everything up. All right, guys, so the next part of this process is this. We're going to take our SSD that we just removed from our micro PC. We're going to go ahead and grab this device right here. This is a SATA to USB adapter cable. I'll provide you guys with a link up here at the top of your screen to this. They're really inexpensive. You may even have one of these already. They're great for simply doing this. I'll show you guys all you're going to have to do here. You're going to take your SSD. You have your SATA connection right here. You're just going to line up your SATA connection cable, plug it in just like that. And now we're going to be able to connect this over via USB connection over to our PC and start setting this up. Now, the process that I'm going to walk you guys through is going to erase windows from this. So you're only going to follow the rest of these steps. If you're only going to want to use your PC for retro video game emulation, you're no longer going to be able to use this as a windows PC. If you overwrite this, what you could do is go ahead and set this aside, go get yourself another SSD, bring that into the mix and use that for Botticera. Then of course you could always go back to using this for Windows 10. So that certainly is an option. But for me today, I just want to convert this over 100% over to a game console. Now, in addition to that, I recommend using something like this. This is just a simple flash drive. This is a USB flash drive. This particular one is a Samsung 128 gigabyte flash drive. This is what we're going to use to bring over our BIOS files, our ROMs, all that good stuff. There are other options that you could use. You can use a micro SD card with a micro SD card reader that connects via USB connection. There's lots of ways that we could bring our ROMs in. But for me, this is the simplest way. And I think this is going to be the easiest to follow if you're new to all of this. All right, so the first part of this process is we are going to open up our web browser. Here you can see this is the PC that I just got off of Amazon. But we're going to navigate over to bodicera.org. Okay, and I'll provide you guys with a direct link so you don't even have to do that much. Just click that link in the description of this video. You're going to come to this website right here, and we're going to go over to where it says Get Botticera Linux 39. Now, if you're watching this much later, it might be a different number there because they are constantly updating and evolving. So you may have a later version of this. So what we're going to do here is on the top left corner, we're going to go ahead to where it says Desktop PC Laptop and you see an Intel based Apple computers. We're going to go ahead and just download this right here in the top uh, top right of that window. So you'll download that. It should take, it says here, probably about five minutes would be my guess. It seems to be fluctuating, you know, dependent on obviously internet speeds, all that good stuff and the PC that you're downloading to. But go ahead and let this download. I'm going to actually X this out because I've already downloaded it. But let this download. And then what we're going to do from here is we'll open up another window and we're going to go over to Google and well, for you guys, I'll provide a direct link, but we're going to go over to Belena Etcher. Okay. And the website here is etcher.belena.io. If we open this up, this is the full website right here. So you know you have the right one. Go ahead and download the Etcher right here. This is a really quick download, it takes just a few seconds. Download this. It's going to download to your desktop. Go through the, um, you know, the download process once it pops up on your screen. It's a safe program to use. Very good for flashing images over to SSDs, micro SD cards, flash drives, et cetera. And one other thing that I recommend getting is 7-Zip. You're going to want this for um, some ROMs, BIOS files, stuff like that. So you can actually click the other link in the description of this video to 7-Zip, and that's going to look like this page right here. So right here, I went with the 64-bit Windows X64 version, so I just downloaded this one right here. Downloads very quickly, just like Melena Etcher. Very good pro uh, program to use for unzipping and zipping files and folders, all that good stuff. So I'll walk you guys through how we'll use this a little bit later, but just make sure that you have this on hand, Belena Etcher, and you're downloading Botticera. So now Botticera just completed its download in the background. So what we're going to do now is we can just go to our desktop. We're going to locate Belena Etcher. Go ahead and do that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open up Belena Etcher. We're going to click on Flash From File, and we're going to locate our downloads folder and locate our new Botticera download. So right here I have it. Double click on that. Make sure it's the .img file. You don't have to extract that. You don't have to do anything to it. Just use it exactly as it downloaded. 
Now we're going to hit select target. Now right here, automatically, my SSD that I connected through that SATA to uh, USB adapter automatically populates in because this is the only thing I have plugged into my PC currently. If you have a flash drive, if you have a micro SD card, if you have another SSD connected, you're going to have multiple targets listed here. So it does get a little bit uh, complex. It gets a little confusing there. So make sure that you're selecting the proper drive here or the pro proper um, target device. So in this case, we had that 256 gigabyte SSD from inside of our micro PC. You can see right here, this lines up perfectly. We have 256 gigabytes showing up for the size. Okay, we'll go ahead and check that. We'll hit select. So now what we have here is we have Botticera as you know, what we're going to be adding over. And now we have selected the drive that we want to add Botticera over to. Now we're just gonna simply click flash. So we'll go ahead and do that. It's gonna give us this warning here. You're about to erase an unusually large drive. This is just confirming that we want to go ahead and overwrite our SSD with Botticera. So make sure that's what you wanna do. If you don't wanna do that, just go out and get yourself a secondary um, mechanical drive or SSD to flash Botticera to, and you can leave windows on the SSD that you extracted and removed from your uh, PC and, you know, be able to use that later on, plug it back in, you know, whatever. You're going to preserve that, not override it. So in this case, I'm fine with overriding it. I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, I'm sure. And it's going to start the process here. It's going to ask us to just confirm, hit yes. And it's going to start the process here. First, it's going to flash. Uh, it goes through, I believe, a three-part process, but it is pretty quick here. We're not adding ROMs on here yet. We're not adding BIOS files. This is a very quick process. So we're already at 35, 40% now. We'll let it do its thing. We'll come back here momentarily. All right, guys, here we are, 90%, and we are all done. Now it's just going to finish up. We should get a confirmation. There we go. So this is what you want to see. You want to see that it says flash completed and you don't want to see, you know, any error messages or anything like, like that. If you see an error message, just go through the process again. I have run into that a few times where it just kind of misfires or something goes wrong unexpectedly. If you do it again, you should end up with, you know, a successful uh, target here, which is what we're seeing. So this means that Botticera is now on that SSD. We no longer have Windows 10 on there, so we are ready to go in terms of booting up Botticera on that uh, micro PC that we had. But we want to do a few other things here first, just so we make sure that we gather some additional information so we can get through things a little bit more seamless once we do install that back into our micro PC and fire up Botticera. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to get some ROMs so we can add some games over to Botticera. And we also need to get our BIOS files because currently we don't have BIOS files ready to go for our emulators. So we need to locate those. You can do a Google search, but I recommend checking out archive.org. If you go to archive.org, I'll show you guys. This is archive.org. And you just simply go over here to the search and you type in Botticera. BIOS, uh, bot actually Botticera, and then put the version that you downloaded. So if you're watching this later on and you're on like version 41, type in 41. In this case, it's 39 for me. So I put in Botticera 39 BIOS, and we'll just go ahead and hit enter. So you'll see a bunch of different options here. I always go with the one that has the most interactions. So um, 1,200 people have looked at this one over here. So just go with that one. That one over there is probably fine too. It looks like, looks like it's actually from the same person. So we're going to go in here, just simply download your BIOS files. And if, if one doesn't work for you, just go to the other one. There's usually a couple different options on here. So I already did that. Once you've downloaded it, it's going to go in just like Botticera did over to your downloads folder. And now this is where we're going to actually use 7-Zip to unzip everything because it's going to download zipped up. So I actually downloaded these a little while back. So right here, I just did a little search for them. But you can see right here, we have the compressed zipped version. So all you're going to do is you're going to actually highlight it, right click on it, you can go to show more options. And 7-Zip, as long as you've downloaded it, should populate in here. We're just going to go over to extract files. You're going to confirm everything here. So here I am extracting those BIOS files. And now you should have a version that is now extracted. Double click on that. And you're going to have all these files here. So we'll go ahead and we're going to highlight ROMs, saves, system, and BIOS here. Now we're going to right click and copy. So I have to go to show more options and copy. You can just hit control uh, C on your keyboard. It's going to be a shortcut for that copying process. Now we're going to take our USB flash drive. We're going to connect that over to our PC. Go ahead and do that. 
So I just did that and you can see it populating in on the left hand side right here. Here it is. Now that I'm inside of that USB flash drive, I'm just going to right click. I'm going to go to show more options and hit paste. And it's going to bring all four of those files or folders right in here. So our BIOS, our saves, all that stuff is going to drop directly in here. So let it do its thing here. It's going to take uh, probably a couple minutes or so. It's going to drop all four of those in and then we can go ahead and add in some ROMs. All right, guys, here it is, 99%. So we have all four of these dropped into our flash drive currently. All right, guys, we got our four folders into our flash drive. We're ready to go now. We have your BIOS files. You have everything that you need, but now you need to locate some ROMs. So I can't show you guys this process because it is controversial, but you can go online. You can Google ROMs. You can go to archive, look up ROMs over there. There's a ton of ways to locate ROMs, or you can go ahead and get one of those uh, drives online that has ROMs already ready to go. And you could just use one of those to bring your ROMs over to your setup. So I'm going to add a few ROMs of my own that I already have on my computer to this flash drive. We're going to jump back over to our micro PC, reinstall this SSD, which now has Botticera on it inside the PC, and we're going to kick everything off over there. We'll be able to now complete everything purely from that PC. Let's dive into it. All right, guys, here we are back to our micro PC. We've got our SSD right here. We're going to simply install this back in. So all you have to do is just line it up properly and literally just slide it into place. It's going to automatically connect over. You'll hear it click in here. So now we can go ahead and reinstall the top lid or cover onto our PC. Just simply get it in the track, squeeze it together, and just tighten that screw in the back. Next thing we're going to do is we're just going to make all of our different connections on here. So we'll connect our power supply cable over. We'll connect our keyboard as well as our mouse so we have full access to everything. And then we'll go ahead and simply power this on. Because Botticera is on that SSD, we don't have to change the boot order. We don't have to do anything at all. We just have to simply power it on. So let's go ahead and set this up and power it on. All right, guys, we've got our keyboard, we've got our mouse, we've got our PC ready to go. All we need to do now is just simply boot this up by hitting our power button. All right, guys, so here we are booted up into our SSD, now running Botticera that we installed back inside of our micro PC. So you're going to have a couple collections in here by default. There's really not much in here. Like you can see here, we have a game inside Super Nintendo, one inside of NES, uh, PC Engine, Commodore 64, uh, et cetera. So what we need to do is we need to take our flash drive now. We need to add our BIOS files from our flash drive as well as our ROMs. So you're going to grab your keyboard, which I have attached right here. You're going to hit F1 on your keyboard. That's going to open up your file system here. And now go ahead and take that flash drive and connect that over to this PC. So you can see I just did that. And here is my ESD USB uh, flash drive. So if I actually go over here and I click on that, you're going to see that I have my BIOS files, but I also have all of these other ROM collections that I put together on here and I added over. I had these actually saved on my PC. I have a couple other drives, uh, Botticera drives and LaunchBox drives as well. So I could just kind of pull different ROMs from different places. So I've got some GameCube, some MAME, Master System, Mega Drive, N64, Neo Geo, NES, PS2. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to highlight first our BIOS, we're going to highlight our ROMs, we're going to highlight our saves, and we're going to highlight our system. So all four of these are highlighted just like we did before when we initially brought them over to our flash drive. We're going to simply right click and click on copy. Now we're going to go up here to where it says share on the left column. And you'll notice that we have BIOS in here, we have ROMs in here, we have saves in here, and we have system in here. We're going to simply right click and click paste. This is going to overwrite everything that's already in Botticera by default, and it's going to update everything. So we have the updated uh, files here. So, all right, so I just removed myself from the corner since I was blocking the buttons. Now we're just going to click overwrite, and it's going to overwrite everything. What you can do here is actually in the bottom left corner, it says apply this option to all existing files. Just go ahead and hit overwrite. This is going to just automate everything so you don't have to confirm every single thing within each of these pretty good sized folders. So that did everything in a matter of like two seconds there. So we are all set with our BIOS files and folders. Everything is good to go there. Now we're going to go back over to our flash drive. We can avoid BIOS. And what I'll do is I'll just go one by one through these. You could do them all at once if you wanted to. Um, actually, I'll do it this way. I'll do MAME. I'll do Master System, Mega Drive. We'll do N64, Neo Geo, NES, and Super Nintendo. We're going to leave PS2 as well as GameCube 
alone and I'll show you guys how we could do it manually or the entire folder. So we've highlighted all these folders, we're gonna hit copy. And now we're going to go over here to where it says ROMs on the left hand column. And because everything is labeled the exact same way, we could just go down here to an open area, right click and hit paste. This is going to overwrite the entire folders here rather than just the contents within. So we'll go ahead and hit overwrite. We could do the exact same uh, thing here, apply this option to all existing files. We'll hit overwrite and it's going to update all of those folders. So now our main folder is not going to be empty anymore as it comes to fall with Bodicera, it's going to be filled up with the contents of all the ROMs that I had brought in through my flash drive. So we've got about a minute to go on here. We'll let this do its thing and we'll come back once it's complete. All right, guys, we got the last couple seconds ticking down right here. So we're gonna go ahead now and we're gonna just confirm that that actually worked. So let's go over to N64, for example, we'll double click. And here you can see we've got all of our N64 games added in here. So I didn't have a massive assortment of N64 games, but we got them in here, we're good to go. So I just wanted to do this as a demo. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into our flash drive, we're gonna go into our GameCube folder. I'm gonna do these manually. So I have Mario Kart Double Dash, Mario Power Tennis, Super Mario Strikers, and Super Smash Brothers Melee. We're gonna copy these, and we're doing the individual ones. So now we're going to go over to ROMs, we're gonna locate our GameCube folder, there it is right there. We're gonna go into it now because we're not doing the entire folder and we're just gonna paste the individual four ROMs in here manually. So this should be pretty quick here, just a couple of seconds, we'll let it do its thing. And then we also have PS2 in here too. I had two PS2 games I wanted to add, so we'll go over here to our flash drive. We'll open up PS2. So we have SmackDown, Shut Your Mouth from WWE and NHL Hits Pro. We'll copy these, we'll go back over to our ROMs We'll locate now our PS2 collection, which should be, there we go, PS2 right there. Manually drop these two in. Should be another quick process here, just 5.2 gigabytes for these two titles. And here we go. So those are added in here. Now we're going to go ahead and hit file, close window. And what we'll do now is we'll hit our space bar now that we're back out here to Vodacera. We're gonna go into game settings. We're gonna go into update games lists. Confirm that. All right, guys, so here we are landing back into Vodacera. Now it looks exactly as it did before, but if we scroll over, we're gonna see that those new collections that we put ROMs into. So Super Nintendo populates in and uh, 64 populates in GameCube. Game Boy Advance was here already, but Master System, Mega Drive, Neo Geo, PS2, all of those are now present. And because like Mega Drive, for example, I brought in the entire folder, it's gonna pull all the scrape data automatically as well. So we have the screenshot that morphs into the video preview with this specific theme. So it looks really nice and tidy here, but because we didn't do that with like PS2 or GameCube, you'll see here that these populate in very differently. They don't have the scraped data. So I have a video tutorial on how to set up Screen Scraper. That's the best tool for adding all that data in here. So click the link at the top of your screen or in the description of this video to see that video. It's really in depth, so I'm not gonna walk you guys through that here in this one, but if you click over, you'll see all of that. And same thing over here for GameCube, you'll see that because we just brought individual ROMs in, which is likely what you're doing from scratch, they populate it in like this. It's just not as cool looking, uh, not as seamless. Yeah, you know what they are, they still work fine, but they're not going to be as flashy and as you know seamless of an experience, I think. So definitely watch that screen scraper video, but we need a controller now. So I just go ahead, went ahead and connected this controller. This is just a wired Xbox style controller. What we need to do now is we need to actually map this. So we'll hit the space bar on our keyboard. It opens up our main menu. We'll go down to controller and Bluetooth settings and we'll go to controller mapping. So now it's gonna say okay. And all right, so since I connected this, it says one gamepad detected. It's automatically detecting that I have this connected, but it is not mapped yet. So we need to just hold down any button on here and it's registering this as a Microsoft Xbox One, which is pretty accurate. It is that style controller, even though it's not Microsoft. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to assign the buttons to the functions that are listed on screen. So you notice you have a diagram plus labeling there. So for south on this style controller, it's gonna be the A button. So I just simply hit the A button. For east, it's gonna be the B button. For north, it's gonna be the Y button. And for west, it's gonna be the X button. Now for start, I'll hit start. For select, I'll hit select. Uh, up, down, left, and right for the D-pad. We'll do all of those quickly. We have our left shoulder, right shoulder, analog, left, up, analog, left, left, uh, analog, right, up, 
analog right left and then we're going to hit our left trigger right trigger left stick right stick and then for hotkey i always use the same button as select that means when you're in a game and you want to get out of a game you'll hit select and start at the same time it activates your hotkey function so i think it's really um easy to use like that and then we'll just confirm everything with our a button in this case or your south button whatever you assigned as your south button on here so all right we're, we're good to go now with the controller i'm able to navigate the screen so i'll back out of this let's test out some of the games that we just added in to gauge where the performance lies with this micro pc <laughs> Guys, you can see how well this micro PC actually performs as a retro game console if you simply set up Botticera on your SSD, bring your BIOS files in, bring your ROMs in, and if you spend a little bit of time on here, you can make it really cool looking as well. So let me show you guys how I've actually made my Botticera setup look because if you add themes in there, you scrape all your games, and you add video previews, you can really make this look exceptional. Let's dive into what I've set up on my own for my own personal use.
All right, guys, so just wanted to show you how you could take a budget-friendly micro PC like this one right here from Dell and turn it into a powerhouse of a retro video game emulation home console. So really a great experience here. GameCube worked great. PS2 worked great. I'll give you guys a little spoiler on this. Even some Nintendo Switch games will run on this micro PC right here. Not everything is going to work perfect with those higher end collections, but several games will. So you can get into some phenomenal stuff right here. And in addition to that, if you spend a little bit of time, you saw what my setup looks like here. You can scrape your games. You can add video previews. You can change your theme. You can make it look really catchy and just improve your experience tremendously. So I'm going to provide you guys a link to this mini PC up here at the top of your screen. Check the description as well. I provided all the links that I mentioned along the way in this little process today in the description of this video. So if you enjoy the content today, please give me a thumbs up on the video. It's a huge help to me here on YouTube. And of course, hit subscribe to stay in the loop for all future videos right here on the Retro Gaming Guy YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.